Good evening and welcome to this installment of Pastor on the Porch. It is April 21st and whoever flipped the switch to turn the cold back on needs to go back in that room and flip it to the other, to the warm setting. But uh, I am here. We are out here on the porch. I, <clears throat> excuse me, didn't want to get the heater back out and everything, uh, drag everything back up here. So, uh, little uh, frigid this evening with the wind blowing and the pollen uh, going in by in clouds of what sometimes looks like dust and uh, I don't know about you but it's been knocking me knocking my socks off because of the allergies that are uh, part of it so uh, but we've had up until today halfway decent weather and actually today was kind of nice but uh here we are the 21st of april 2021 um i didn't hear the entire news conference i read some of the briefs this afternoon from the state and it looks like we are moving in a positive direction and as long as we continue to move in that positive direction looks like we will have a uh, little more opening up in the not too distant future, which will mean that we as churches will be able to get back to our routine and back into a new routine um, in hopefully the not too distant future. The bishop and as well as the CDC and the uh, North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, so. With that being said, and the uh, prospects of positive things happening in the not too distant future, I want to uh, uh, move towards our devotional this evening. It comes from the, uh, what does, is it? Jesus Calling, that's what it's called. Jesus is Calling. Uh, that's our book that or a uh, devotion daily devotional that i've been reading and uh, i encourage others that if you're looking for something it is i would say 99 percent of the uh, days so far have uh, touched me in some way shape or form some have been yeah but most have been very informative and make made me think a lot about the words that were spoken in the devotional so let me read it to you let me control your mind the mind is the is the most restless unruly part of mankind long after you have learned the, the discipline of holding your tongue your thoughts defy your will and set themselves up against me being jesus man is principle of my I risked all by granting you freedom to think for yourself this is God this is godlike privilege forever setting you apart from animals and robots I made you in my image precariously close to deity through my blood though my blood has fully redeemed you your mind is the last bastion of rebellion. Open yourself to my radiant presence, letting my light permeate your thinking. When my spirit is controlling your mind, you are filled with life and peace. Amen. What I tell you, every time I read these, spark something in me and those of you that know me fairly well or even somewhat know that my mind goes 500 miles an hour it doesn't ever seem to slow down even in the evenings when I'm trying to sleep it still keeps going and will oftentimes keep me awake I require a lot of white noise to go to sleep to if you've ever seen me in my office, people often wonder how I can be working and getting anything done as I generally have at least two screens going, a radio going, and possibly some other 
listening device going, just functioning all at the same time. It's that restless mind. That mind that keeps moving, that mind that never slows down, that mind that thinks for itself, as we were reading tonight. A mind that, while it is part of our human being, it is part of the choice part of our lives. The choice, the free will part of our lives, which God gave us that free will. God gave us the ability to choose. God gave us the ability to make decisions for ourselves. Now, God guides us in those decisions. God gives us the moments in time to direct us through other people, through other beings, through other creation. But God gives us that choice. Some choices are simple. Chocolate or vanilla. Ice cream. Or in my case, non-dairy Ben and Jerry's. Cookie dough. But other choices we make are much harder. Is this the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with? Is this the person that I want to go and be my go out and hang out with and make friends with? Is this the activity that I need to be doing right at this moment? Is this where I need to be spending my time? Is this what I need to be spending my money on? Those choices, those decisions that we make, I pray that you make those big decisions in prayer, through prayer, with God guiding you and you listening for God to speak to you through the Holy Spirit. And I realize that sometimes we make those split-second decisions. I'm the worst at it as far as impulse buying goes. How I haven't ended up with a zillion different things in my garage, I'm still trying to figure out some days. Erica keeps complaining that I keep bringing home grills and then I remind her I cook with them. So she, and then she tells me that, well, you can only cook with one at a time. So then I prove her wrong and use two or three of them to cook one meal just to, just to spider sometimes. But why am I doing that? Why am I making that conscious choice to do those things? It's because I'm listening to my mind. I'm listening to the mind that is there to help me breathe. I'm listening to the mind that's purpose is to keep my heart beating. I'm listening to the mind whose purpose is to tell me how to walk with one foot in front of the other. Using my mind sometimes forgets to filter what comes out of that mouth. Oftentimes we say things, we do things, we act on things on impulse because we don't allow them to sit. We don't take that couple minutes of time and to use a cooking term, let it marinate. Let it marinate in our head. Let it soak in. Let us feel what is happening. Instead, we react instantaneously. And when we do that, we are not doing what God has taught us to do. Though Jesus acted in ways that seemed instantaneous, that seemed 
in the moment that seemed like they hadn't been planned. Each and every one of those moments was planned. Each and every one of those moments was something that God had in store for, J for Jesus. The prophets were much the same way. The prophets used their minds and often ran from God. Jonah ran from God. Jeremiah ran from God. Their mind told them to do other things. Their mind told them to run and hide. Their mind told them to act in a particular way. But after they let it sit, after they let it, after they pondered those things that God was telling them to do, both of those prophets came around to God and did as was asked. Jesus did what was asked of him. Jesus went beyond what was asked of him. Jesus went beyond what was asked of him to the point where he gave his life for us so that we would live a life of forgiveness. We would live a life where our sin would be forgiven. That's what Easter is all about. The tomb was empty. The resurrected Christ lifted out of that tomb and into our hearts, our minds, and our souls. And as each of us see Jesus, differently, as each of us see how the Lord works in us differently, as each of us see how the Holy Spirit speaks and blows upon us differently. One single truth in all of that is that it's all done by the Lord. It's all guided by the Lord. So that's what I'm asking you this evening. Go back to our devotional. We're wondrously complex people. Man is the critical, pinnacle, excuse me, pinnacle of God's creation, according to us according to what we say, according to what we write. We are the pinnacle of God's creation. I could argue that I've seen some pretty magical pieces of God's creation that are inanimate objects. But as far as those living, breathing creatures, we are the most advanced at this point. And our mind is the last thing that we have to change. We are created by God. We are made in the image of God. But friends, we have to accept that creation, accept that image, and not only accept it, but live into it. And not just live into it when it's comfortable for us to live into but live into it 365 days a year. That's seven days a week. That's 24 hours a day. We have to do that in order to fully be in, of, and a child that God finds in the image of God, that God created us to be. If we're only doing it part way, we might as well not do it at all. If we're only doing it when we're seen doing it, we might as well not be doing it at all. 
if we're only doing it to be seen doing it, we really don't need to be doing it at all. Because that's not what God calls us to do. God calls us instead to be like Jesus, to follow the commandment, the new commandment, to love like Jesus loved. That means to love each and every one that you come in contact with. To love the creation that God has given us. Both in human form and in the form of nature. So set your mind on that path this evening. And give creation both alive and well, and humankind, all 100% of your love, so that your love will be felt by another one of God's creation. Thank you, and amen. Finish up a little early tonight, but uh, wanted to... Uh, send out a reminder if you're watching this live or in the evening on uh, Wednesday night make sure to take your plants in or cover them up we're supposed to have a freeze warning or watch or something going on tonight so uh, take those plants in so we they uh, are so that you're showing your love of God's creation beyond just people well, join me in prayer Lord, as we gather here this evening on this porch with the wind blowing, the pollen flowing, and our minds racing, we ask you to give us a space to just slow down. Give us a space to marinate on what you're telling us. Give us a space to react and listen. But not listen to react. Listen to hear. Hear you, Lord in our lives, of our lives, and through our lives, in many different ways. Through the forgiveness of your, that your Son has given us, through the death and resurrection, through your Holy Spirit, who blows upon us each and every moment of each and every day, and through the Lord, our Father, who gave His Son to be resurrected, and taught Him in ways that we now have been taught, in ways of living, of ways of loving, in ways of being. I ask this in your resurrected Son's holy and blessed, blessed name. Amen. Go forth, folks, tonight. Stay warm. Let me know if anything happens property-wise or... Anything uh, in your lives where you need to, to talk, my phone's always on. Text me if you've got my number. If not, I will make sure to put it in this week's email. Go forth, love like Christ loved, and go in peace. But friends, as a good friend of mine says, don't go to pieces. Love you all. Amen.